Hello YouTube friends, Steve here. Today I'm going to show you the Zoom R16 recorder that I have right here. This is a 16 track recorder. It records on SD cards and you could use it as a standalone recorder or you could use it as an interface and controller for a computer based recording system such as Cubase. What I like about this recorder is it has eight inputs right here so you could record eight tracks at the same time. It makes it great for recording a band. This goes for about 400 bucks. I'm going to take you through a step-by-step -step process right now of how to record with the R16. Here we go. Okay, to get started, first we're going to turn the recorder on. Power switch is in the back. You'll see the screen come up right there. Okay, so now we're going to start to record. We're going to start a new project. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to hit the project button right there. So we hit the project button and you'll see new come up so we want to start a new project so you see new and then you're going to come down here you're going to hit the enter button okay so there's a new project now you'll see the, um, the cursor flashing so we're going to name the project and let's just I'm going to use the jog wheel over here and let's just call it new so there's the N then we're gonna click that button you'll see the cursor move to the next P so we're gonna change the, the P to an E and then we're gonna hit this arrow button here and then we'll call it new and we'll just leave it at that, you know, just to save time. So then we're going to hit enter. Okay, and it's going to ask you to, if you want to continue, and you're going to hit enter again. Create. You're going to hit enter again. And now it's loading. And so now you have a new project. So here's your new song. Okay, now what I did is I hooked up a drum machine. I'm using the Zoom. MRT3 drum machine and I'm coming out of that and you can see I plugged it into inputs 1 and input 2 all right now to record I'm going to see these buttons right here it says play mute and record now if the button is green then you're just in play mode okay if the button isn't lit at all you're in mute mode so to record you want to be red. So now we're recording on tracks one and two. So now we got to get a signal. Okay? So I'm going to hit play on the drum machine. And now you can see we have a signal. I have my faders up on tracks one and two, and I have my fader up on the master. Okay? So now we just want to get a level. So now you see if I turn this, we're going to peak. We don't want it to peak. It's okay if it lights up intermittently, but we don't want it to be constantly red. So we're going to leave it right about there. You can see we got the levels there, and there's the master. And now I'm going to go back over here and I'm going to press stop on the recorder. Oh, I'm sorry, on the drum machine. Now I'm going to come back over here. Now we're going to get set to record. So I'm going to click the record button and I'm going to click play. Now you can see that the timer is going right there. I'm going to come back over here and I'm going to hit play on the drum machine. And now we're just going to let it run for about 20 seconds. I'm going to do a real short song right here. Now, when you're done with recording the track, you click stop. And I'll come back to the drum machine and I'll shut the drum machine off. Okay, so now we recorded the drum track. We want to go back to the beginning. I'm going to hit this button right here. It says F3. That's going to take you back to the beginning of the song. Now, I don't want to record on this track anymore, so what I'm going to do is I am going to light tracks 1 and 2 up green. 
So now they're just in play mode and you don't have to worry about accidentally recording over them. So we're just going to review to make sure the track took and we're going to hit play. You see it's playing right there. And there's the drum track. Okay, now I'm ready to record the bass. I have the bass in input number four. I'm going to come down here. I'm going to turn up the fader. I'm going to make sure I'm in record mode. So I click the button. You see it's red now. Now I just got to get a level on the bass. I'm going to hit the bass string. I'm going to turn up the level knob. That's good right about there. Now let's say I want to use one of the built-in amp models that come with the R16. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to insert effect right here. And when I click this button, you'll see this the screen change. I click on insert effect. And now I'm in the section where all the, the different models are. Right now I'm in the mic section. I don't want the mic section, I want the bass section. So I'm going to click the left arrow and now I'm in the bass section. Right there there's a hard key model that I could use. If I use the jog wheel, I can go through all the different type of amp amps that they have in the system here. All right, so I want to use the hard key. We're going to use the hard key. So we're set up to use the hard key. Now, if you accidentally hit enter, you'll see the insert effect is off. So now you can't use the effect. We want the insert effect on, so we're going to click enter. All right, so now we're set up to use the hard key, but we're not done. We have to make sure that the signal is going to the correct input. So what we're going to do is we're going to click the down button right here. And now we're in another section. This is, you see it says edit, save. I'm scrolling through by using this right button right here. Or you could use the left button, either or. But I'm scrolling through. There's a record signal. I want input source. That's what I want. So now input source, I'm going to click enter. Okay, now it's set up to input one. We're input from number four, so we want it on number four. So I go to the jog wheel, and there it is in input four. Now I have the heart key effect on my bass, and that'll go to the recorded track. Now a mistake some people might make is they might think it goes to track number four. That would be incorrect. You don't want to do that. If you want to record the actual amp itself, you want it to be in the input. So we'll go back to input four. There it is. We're good to go. And now we're just going to clear out all this by hitting exit. Go back to the beginning. Now you'll see we're back where the song is. And we're going to click this left arrow right here to go back to zero. Now we are ready to record the bass track. Now we're ready to do a take on the bass track. You can see the drums are in the green, that's good. The bass is red, so we're just going to be recording on this track right here. We're going to click record, and then play, and then we're good to go. Here we go. Okay, now we're done recording that track, we just click stop. Okay, now we're going to review that track. I am going to uh, jog back to where the song started, which was about 8 seconds. I'm going to come over here, put it back in play mode. So now we're no longer in record mode, we're in play mode. You can see the light is green. And I'm just going to hit play. We'll listen back real quick to make sure we got a clean take. Okay, so everything's there, we're good, we're going to move on to the guitar track now. Okay, now we're ready to do the guitar. I have the guitar in input 6, so I am going to turn up the level. Click on the mode, we're in record mode, the light's red, I'm going to turn it up, the level. Leave it there. Now I want to check the tuning, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Tool over here. I'm going to click on Tool. And you'll see it says metronome. I don't want metronome. I'm going to click it to the right. Tuner. 
There it says tuner. I'm going to click enter. And now we're going to tune the guitar. Make sure we're in tune. E's good. A's good. Now we're in tune. I'm going to click exit. I'm going to get out of the tuner mode. And now we're going to go back to um, finding some amp sounds, you know, for the guitar. You know, we don't want to record dry. Okay, just like before, as we did with the bass, we're going to do with the guitar. We're going to click on insert effect right there. Uh, we're in the bass section. So we want to be in the guitar section. So we are going to look around for the guitar. That's the acoustic section. All right, here's the distortion section. That's good. That's what we want. So we uh, want to be in input number six. So we're going to click down input source. Click enter. And now we want to be in input six. So there's five. And there's input six. Okay. Click exit again. So now we're in distortion section. Now if I want to change, let's see what we got here. This is uh, what they call 5150. Um, MS 1959. We're going to go back to the 5150. We'll just use that. We'll use that for now. We're going to do a guitar track. Um, so we're all set up to do the guitar. We're in uh, input six. Red light is on. Fader is up. We've selected our amp, which is the 5150. And now all we have to do is go back to the beginning and hit the record button. Now we're good to go and get a guitar track. All right, I'm ready to do a guitar take. I'm in input six. We're in uh, record mode. Red light is on. Fader is up. Hit record. Play. Here we go. Click stop. Guitar take is done. All right, now I'm going to show you how to use the auto punch feature. I'm going to do a lead guitar track. I have it in track input seven. Red lights on, so in record mode, faders up. I'm going to play the track, and when I want to punch in, I'm going to click the auto punch button, which is right here. And then when I want to punch out, I'm going to click it again. So you'll see what I'm talking about right here. I press play. Here comes the track. All right, I want the lead guitar to come in right here. One, two, three, four. Now I want to punch out. Right there. Now I'm going to click stop. So I can see that the auto punch feature is engaged. I'm going to go back to the beginning of the track. See the red light flashing. I'm going to hit record and play. Now you see the red lights flash and that's where we want to be. So now we're going to, when we record, the red lights are going to go solid. Here it comes. Now it's that. Now it goes back to flashing. All right, so we're going to review the track. We're going to put it to green. We're going to back the track up. We're going to see if it took. So it took. All right, now I'm going to show you how to do some mixing and EQing. As you can see, here's the drum tracks, here's the bass track, here are the two guitar tracks, everything's lit up green. What we're going to do is come over here and we're going to click on the button that says Pan EQ. I'm going to click that and you're going to see the screen change. All right, so now 
if I pull the camera out a little bit, you'll see I'm on track one. And you'll see it's lit up orange. So right now what we're doing is we're setting up the pan and the EQ and the reverb on track one. All right. And to do that, we're going to use these arrow buttons right here. If I use the up arrow, you'll see we're in the pan section. I use the jog wheel. I can move it to the right, but we're going to keep it to the left. And we use the down button. And uh, here's the high EQs. We'll put a little high on it. Keep the mids where they're at. I'm going to keep putting, the, pressing the down button. Here's the lows. Let's move the frequency up to about, let's say, 63 hertz right there. I use the down button again. And here's the reverb. Okay, so the reverb set at 7. Let's move that up to about 20. We're still going to have to pick out a reverb, but I'm just going to show you how to set everything. Okay. Now I'll use the up button. I'll go back to the top. All right, now I'm going to use this right button. And when I click the right button, you're going to see that orange light on the left side of the screen. It's going to move over one track to track two. So I'm going to click the right button. Okay, so now we're working on track two. So here's the EQ for track two in the pan. We're at the pan. Now, if I move the jog wheel to the left, you'll see it moving the pan, but we're going to keep the jog wheel all the way to the right. We're going to keep that drum track pan to the right. We're going to go down. There's the EQ again. I'm going to keep going down. Let's add a little mids just to show you I'm doing something here with the EQ. Okay, there's the lows. Let's move it up. We'll crank up the lows a little bit to about 7. Move this up to about 63 hertz. And again, we're going to add some reverb. We'll go to 20. All right. So now we're going to EQ the bass track. Again, I'll pull the camera out. You're going to see that track jump over to track 3 when I click the right button. And I'm going to click the right button again. It's going to move to track 4. Now I'm working on the bass track. So I'll go to the top of the screen. There's the pan. Uh, let's pan it, at a, we'll pan it left about 16. And I'll go down, and now I'm going to EQ the high. I'll roll off a little bit of the high. Move down to the mids. The mids are off. If I want the mids on, I press Enter. But I don't want any mids, so I'm going to click Enter again, and the mids are off. I'll move down to the lows. I want some lows. I want to control the lows, so I'm going to click Enter. And 3 dB, and let's move it down to like 100... 125 Hertz reverb I don't want too much reverb we just put go 10 okay so now we're going to EQ the guitar again I'll pull the camera out and we'll jump over to track number six right there you see the orange light is on so now I'm working on track six and go to the top pan 32 that's kind of panned hard to the right so I'm going to move it over and we'll pan it right 16 and now we'll just do some EQing there's some highs uh, let's put some mids on there we'll just jump the mids up to about one let's see the lows uh, lows we're going to take some of the lows off we'll drop down and down to one and we'll jump the frequency up to about 500 and reverb, I'm going to back the reverb up. We'll, we'll put it at about 25. We're going to get to the reverb section in a second. Now I'm going to do the same thing for the lead track. Again, I'll pull the camera out. I'll click this right button. Now we're working on the lead track, which is track 7. I'm going to take it to the top. And we're going to, let's pan that hard right. Go right 32. And again, now we're working on the EQ. The high is off, so I want to EQ the high. So I'm going to hit Enter. And we'll leave it at 6. And maybe we'll back this frequency off to about, let's say, 630. Put some mids on there. And again, I'm, just, I'm doing this real quick just to demonstrate how, how the features work. 
so you get an idea of what goes on. We'll take some of the lows off. Well, we'll put a little low on there. Negative two. And uh, we'll jump that up to about 500. And let's just crank up the reverb on that. Now we're going to get to the reverb section. Okay. So I'm going to click exit, get out of there. Now I'm going to come back up to here and we're going to see send return effects. These are your reverbs. So I'm going to click on that. And I'm gonna press play, and I'm gonna scroll. We'll just use we'll just use the uh, the drums as an example for now, so you could hear what the reverbs do. So now, click play, and we have a small hole. You can hear the reverb. Now let's go to. Uh, there's a big room. British hole. You hear that lot of lot of reverb there. Budokan. We we'll use Budokan, right? So now that Budokan reverb is, is set for all um, five tracks. So now um, let's just set some levels, right? Let's see how it sounds. So the bass is back on. Lead tracks are back on. Take it back to zero. Let's just fast forward a little bit. All right. All right, so let's hear the mix sounds. And back, back the guitar back a little bit. All right, so let's say I'm satisfied with the mix and now I want to use a mastering effect. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go back up over here where we have insert effect. I'm going to click that button. You'll see the screen change. Okay, now this brings us back to where all the, the banks are for guitar and, and the bass. This brings us back to 5150. That's the, um, the amp model that we used to record the guitar tracks. We don't want to be there. We want to find the mastering effects. So we're going to click this left button. You'll see the screen change. Now we're in the clean guitar bank. Now we're in the mastering section. That's where we want to be. So we're going to click the down button. Input source. We want that. So we're going to click enter. Now I'm going to use this jog wheel to get to mask where it says master. This is input one, two. We want the mastering effect on all the tracks. So we're going to go to the master right there. Now we're set. I'm going to click exit. Exit again. Now this is called a full comp mastering effect. And as I change the mastering effects, you'll hear the, the changes in the sound. Uh, this is full comp. Here we go. Use the jog wheel to turn. Clean power. Clear DMS. Maximizer. I'm going to use Maximizer. So now the mastering effect is set in place. Okay, so there you have it. Fairly simple to use the R16 by Zoom. I hope this was an informative video for you. If you have any questions, send them to me. If I can help you, I'll be happy to. And um, here's the final mix as the video is playing out. This is what it sounds like. But I recommend it if you're into recording and you want it simple stupid, this is for you. See you next time.